just blew my mind. So I'm kind of wanted to show uh, how what I did and what WinLink is because I know for at least for me, I had no idea this even existed up until probably about six months ago. And now I, I love using this thing. So the WinLink data mode. What is WinLink? Well, uh, that's kind of thing. WinLink is a worldwide messaging system that uses amateur band radio frequencies and government frequencies to provide radio interconnection interconnection services that include email with attachments, position reporting, weather bulletins, emergency and relief communications, and message relay. Now, if you're like me, in layman terms, that means it's a digital mode that allows you to send emails and other attachments via ham radio. Now. Why is WinLink so useful in an emergency situation? Well, it's a very basic. You don't need civilian infrastructure to send important data. As you know, in Oklahoma and other, uh, like in the hurricane affected areas, as we're seeing right now, if it's bad enough, there is going to be telephone uh, lines down. There's There could be cellular. There could be all kinds of natural disasters that can interrupt uh, n normal communication, mainly the internet, which is a big thing. So the reason why WinLink is so useful is because you don't need to have internet to actually send a email and you can still normal see, I guess that's part of it. So let me explain how the WinLink network works, okay? So how it works is you're going to have your station, the transmitting station is going to be having a PC that connects to a radio via a sound card adapter or a TNC that is going to uh, then send it over the air to a receiving station. Now, there is a whole bunch of receiving stations that are out there, but these receiving stations, it can be peer-to-peer -peer where basically only the station that's transmitting and the stations that's receiving, that's the only thing that's going to get that data. And the uh, station that is receiving is also going to have a PC to decode this also, to uh, decode the digital mode. But the big thing that makes uh, WinLink so useful is that there's gateways, which is kind of like APRS, I guess you could kind of think about it, but basically the uh, receiving station will then upload the messages that you uh, that it receives up to the internet and then it will redirect that to the person it's going to. For example, I had to send an email for the emergency test scenario uh, to the state emergency coordinator. So I sent it over to a station in Arkansas uh, via just radio and then it uh, redirected that over the internet to uh, the email of the state coordinator. So he didn't even have need of radio. So it's it's better, for at least for me, when I think of WinLink and why it's so useful is because it gets rid of a whole line of communication. So like if I had to get a message from an emer uh, from Oklahoma to an emergency agency in like Washington, D.C., and I had an email, at least I knew an email, I would send to a area that's not affected, and instead of having to use like uh, the national traffic system, it just goes to that email, and that's one thing, which makes it very easy and makes getting traffic really cross. Now, there are hundreds of uh, gateway stations around the world. So that's why it's, uh, you have a lot of options and they're on different bands, dif different frequencies. So like if you have a 20 meter antenna, you can do that. If you got an 80 meter antenna, you can do that. And that's why it's also good in emergency situation because well, you got, you don't know what type of antenna you're gonna be using probably at that rate. So uh, the, the two programs that WinLink is used, well, there's a lot of programs that are, use the WinLink system. There is some on Linux, but the most popular one, at least that I use, is the uh, WinLink Express. And uh, I'm actually going to do a live demonstration, hopefully, if the bands will work with me. And I'm going to give you a brief overview of what it's actually like. So this is the uh, WinLink Express uh, uh, software. So basically, it's kind of like a really simple, basic email uh program if you look at it at first because you got your inbox, you got your red items, you got your outbox, you got your sent items and a whole bunch of that stuff. So this is uh, the example of the message that I had to send for the emergency test. Uh, again, you want to make sure that you say simulated because we really don't want people, as Mark said, running around in circles thinking that the world's going to end. So basically I just gave a report and told how many uh, active participants we had and a simulated uh, report for more Oklahoma from a Galen Kitch, uh, what was going on. Uh, I may have screwed up your call sign, so please, I, I had to. That's one thing. I screwed up on spelling, but luckily enough, I was able to redo that. That's the one thing that 
I hate about doing on WinLink. If you screw up on spelling, it takes a while to redo that. So that was the simulated message. But for today, I have kind of a new interesting one. So what I'm going to do is new message. So again, it's like a very simple um, uh, email program. I'm going to send it to Mr. Merck because we all know that he loves getting emails from me. And yes. we're going to do subject, donuts. And let's see if I copied this. All right. So good morning in 5HZR. My name is Matthew S. Lewis, W5MSL, and I am acting as the Youth Cleveland County Donut Attachment Operator. We have a message from the W5 and OR Club. We are needing a dire supply of Joey Donuts at Fire Station 7. The coffee has run out, and the CW operators are getting restless. Please hurry before this entire club falls apart. So uh, then I uh, get the message where that's from. And then I will say that's uh, that was the message, and then I will relay it. We have no further simulated traffic as of 11 a.m. CST. You could, it's better to put it in UTC, but I, I'm lazy, and it's probably not the best way. So that's one good tip. And we will update if any other traffic is involved. So that is kind of an outline that I used when I was making my emergency, simulated emergency message because it, it gets the message across, and it tells who did it if you don't screw up the call signs like me and have to send two more other emails. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to post to the outbox. Now, this is where WinLink gets a little weirder compared to a normal uh, um, email service. So right now, I am running an ICOM 7300, and this makes it super easy because it doesn't have to deal with a whole bunch of TNC. And I actually – let me pull up the this. So this is the WinLink uh, – data mode center so this is how you do it so how as i said there was a whole bunch of gateway stations that you're able to select these are all the gateway stations that uh that i'm able to select so i only have a, a 20 meter antenna out for right now so i'm going to obviously select a 20 meter uh uh, station that is receiving. So I've selected this one and it should be clear. Uh, last time I checked this was uh, in Mexico City. So it's kind of far away but not too bad. There's a whole bunch. Usually I try to use the one in Arkansas because that's where my dipole is oriented and it's really good. And uh, so basically what I do is once I have the channel selected I'm going to start up and if you can hear that that's what the actual data mode is doing. So right now, what it's doing is it's calling the station, and it's waiting for a reply. If it doesn't reply, then, well, we guess the club's not getting its donuts today. Um, I'll probably give it one try. Sometimes it happens where it station bands are not working. But what will happen is it will – well, it just got a reply. So you should be able to kind of see – now it's actually sending the message. So, again, it contacts it, and now it's starting to get a link to it, because it want to make sure that you actually have a link to it. Uh, just bear with me. It takes a minute. Usually, the messages take up to about two minutes. So, this is telling – now, the uh, Win WinLink stations, they can – they have a time. So, right now, I'm sending the message that to W5HCR. And while it's doing this, you can send the message, and if you have any outbound messages, like, come, like receiving messages that you're getting, you're also going to get this while doing this. And as I said, you're able to send emails, photos, uh, positions, uh, weather bulletins. So it is perfect for uh, emergency situations just because it's so versatile. So now it is sending the message, and we will see how long – and this is uh, actually how long it takes. And bear with me. I'm sorry about this. It keeps doing. It takes a minute. It took me for my long message from there. It took me about two minutes to send the message. But if you have a whole bunch of outbound messages, then um, it will it'll take a little longer, but it's better than just you know, sending them over and over again. So it's almost done since this was a very uh, – very small message. When I've sent, I've sent a file attachment before, and those take a long time. Question for you, Matthew. What's the baud rate for that baud transmission? Rate, I think it was 12, uh, 1,200? 1,200. Yes, I think. And that's, that's what the FCC is playing with. Um, mm -hmm. There are options to go higher baud rates, but they're not legal for hams. They, uh, they don't want us competing with uh, sailboat um, uh, sailboat email systems and uh, those uh, for emergencies like the fires in Colorado and in California and in Puerto Rico 
they have given us those higher speeds to go 9600 baud. Uh, I got an email from some clown. You know this guy, mm -hmm. Matthew? Matthew? I Lewis? have no idea. He's and donuts. And right now, it's I'm actually receiving a message also. So I sent an email to myself to test that it's able to receive it. And this is all. This is basically it. It's not that complicated. To, I think the hardest part for me was basically trying to figure out how to set up your radio. Because once you set up your radio, and you do a little tinkering with the uh, software, it's a it's a very fun data mode. I always tell people this is my favorite one to do, mostly because it sounds really weird compared to FT8. Because as you know, FT8 just is a dull tone. This is uh, not boring. So now it's ending the session, and I should have a new message. So I do. And here is me having a test, testing. So that was the one link data mode. So again, as I said, my job was to basically just send a email to the coordinator and um, just do a simulated test. And I uh, hopefully got that done and hopefully don't screw up on too many people's call signs. But that's it. Uh, sorry for taking up your time if I did and I hope you enjoyed it. <laughs> Oh, I think that was a good overview. Um, I did receive the message. I'm going to try to find that uh, here and shoot it back to you. Um, showed it on the on the air here. Come on. And if you have any questions, go ahead. I I sh know a little bit about it. I'm still trying to. I'm not the smartest person on the planet. That's what I'll say. Matt, one uh, one question I've got is, what is the email address that's assigned to you when you do so, this? So the actual email address, because again, it's like an entire another email service uh, when you are doing this. So uh, hold on, I gotta check because I it's I know it's it's my call sign at uh, winlink.com. I think it may be. Let me check real quick. Yes, so it's uh, my call sign at w well w5msl at winlink.org because again, it's acting as an entire another email service. So you get a whole new call sign that you get to, or a whole new email system, that, or email address that you can send or receive out of him. Mm -hmm. Matt, let me say that, first of all, very, very impressive. Uh, what you just showed us, I think, has baffled a lot of people. Uh, you simplified it. Uh, one of the questions I have is, how do you get a listing of the standing stations that you can send messages to? Now, this is one of the coolest things that I also enjoy about it. I, I guess I could try to share my screen if I wanted to do it again. Uh, hold on. Let me try this. But the reason why that it's so cool, well, most of the time, you're just going to update it via um, the Internet because that is it's the easiest and it will automatically update. But in an emergency situation, what you're able to do, so if I go to uh, channel selection, I can update either via the internet or update via the radio. And I could try to update via the radio. I've never actually tried this before, but uh, basically I will do that and I'll start that up. So you're able to update the channel list from a receiving RMS station. So that's the main way. So like if you got no internet, you're still able to see which uh, stations are able to receive and which ones are down. Oh. <clears throat> Okay, the second question I would have on that is you would, at first had talked about peer to peer. So I would take it that peer to peer uh, leaves out utilizing the internet completely. So you would still have a pathway for messaging uh, without having to worry about the, the grid, so to speak, being down. Yes. So basically, a lot of time is. Uh, as you said, it's just peer to peer. So you will not, you don't have to worry about the internet. And uh, basically it won't redirect anywhere else. You're just sending like, let's say uh, Mr. Mark is a uh, other Winlink operator. And I know he's on a certain frequency. I can call him and he like, Oh, I'm here. And then I, I will just send that email to you. So if you have a operator at a, uh, or a, at an emergency agency, that's already there, then that's perfect because then people can contact him. And then he can also redirect those messages. So you can kind of make your own net of sorts, uh, but it's going to take a lot more finesse. Well, I, I can see, you know, I think most of us at work HF probably at one time or another leave our radios on a, a certain frequency that, you know, we monitor or that other people we talk to on a regular basis. And 
So just by doing that would kind of create a, uh, you know, if we wanted to do a list of it, a, a whole peer-to-peer -peer network that uh, could utilize just for that. So that's something I think for the other guys in the club to think about. Uh, you know, it doesn't seem like there's any huge thing here. Uh, uh, the main thing is just doing the interconnect between your computer and your radio and uh, downloading the software, the WinLink software. Is that correct? Uh, kind of. I, I think there's a different, you might need different software for being an RMS station, but I'm not sure. I've never acted as a uh, RMS station. So, but I think you, I know that you are able to receive. I just don't know if you could just leave it listening and it'll do it for you. But I know that that is the basic comp tip. So you got that right. I just don't know exactly how you do it. Wish yeah, or, or you just both listen to the same server, to the same RMS, the, 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 um, the actual um, station that's receiving, and you can go straight through it. So if you're going win link to win link, you don't have to uh, use the internet. It will go straight through their system. Um, but it, but go through one of their um, antennas is probably the best way to do it. Um, you'll bounce through uh, that place in Arkansas or or Tulsa or wherever you want to go. Um, but that way, it'll at least bounce in and out. Um, and and you really don't want to put you really don't want to put it like if you're on uh, 3816, you don't want to leave it there because if somebody starts firing up um, WinLink in the middle of one of the nets, um, <laughs> that's going to get you some new words. <laughs> hey, Matt. Uh, yes. If you've got time, run your receive one more time and see if you received a message from me just a minute ago. Okay. I will crank that up and I will get to it. And uh, let me share my screen one more time. As you can see, you can get, I, I've spent way too many hours on trying to uh, figure these things out. I, 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 once I learned that there was so, a whole world of digital modes, it basically craps a pound. You're just, you'll, you'll spend many late nights trying to figure things out, which does not help with sleep. <laughs> so sleep uh, is highly overrated. <laughs> So now I'm receiving again. And again, it's one of the things that I've read was that it's, it's very, it's very, uh, no, I don't know how to say this. It doesn't screw up with errors a lot. So like it's, uh, oh geez, it doesn't have many errors. I'm sorry to say I'm, my brain is definitely not working today. So like it will not screw up a message. So you're not going to have someone screw up their call sign via like the actual data mode. If you screwed up different question, but that's why it's a uh, very reliable. There we go. Sorry about that. And you just have to work around the band. So you still have to be a good operator, just like uh, doing any other digital mode. You still have to know what bands are good, and uh, you got to make sure uh, that you know your equipment and how to use it, and make sure that you've tested anything beforehand. And I'm also, while I'm doing this, I'm also receiving a uh, message, and I'm also updating my uh, uh channel list so it you can do multiple things it's just it's going to take a little longer now hopefully we'll get generally donuts if not then we'll see what happens <laughs> uh -oh. i was gonna say mark's not really dependable about you know filling donut requests so well i fill the requests i'm not real good at delivering <laughs> that's the problem yeah, well okay yes that's that's true you do get the donuts it they just don't make it to the intended recipients. <laughs> Remember the McDonald's commercial about French fries. <laughs> Order an extra one for the delivery. I don't know. Anybody else have any other questions uh, while we do that? I think Matt, I agree. Matt did a great job um, simplifying yeah. it. It can be very complex. And, and uh, this is, I, I hate to tell you, this is all it is to it, but there's a lot of details that, uh, yeah. that you got to work out between the radio. I have a question, and the... Mark. Go ahead. Uh, Matt, great job. We need more people like you in the club. Um, this goes back to your bullet list, Mark, and uh, kind of backtracking from Winlink here, but has any discussion been made about the use of the uh, FirstNet resources? And maybe Galen can 
chime in on this too because um, David Grizzle, the Norman Emergency Management um, Coordinator, had posted something, I believe it was on Facebook yesterday, uh, regarding an Aries participant who had been granted permission to get a, uh, a FirstNet account. And ha has any discussion been made about that? Oh, we've talked about it in the past. Um, I have a FirstNet account and um, uh, I carry one that's uh, a FirstNet uh, radio or FirstNet phone. There aren't any real additional frequencies at the time, but they're still working on that. Um, yeah. But um, what FirstNet does for you is um, that they, I don't even know if I know how to explain this right. Um, basically, they are another cell provider, wireless provider. Um, they are contracted. It, it's a, a government thing. Um, for first responders, um, they very opened that up a lot, um, but they are contracted right now through AT&T, and basically what they have done is um, not only do you have access uh, to the normal frequencies on your cell phone that AT&T uses, uh, but you also gain access to some of the band 14, uh, which is set aside for public safety. So in theory, Assuming cell towers are up, if the regular channels are jammed, um, this might give you access on your cell phone through band 14. Um, I can add a little bit to that. Um, the advantage of FirstNet is that uh, when a lot of the other, um, let's say bandwidth, if you will, is occupied or goes down is unusable. FirstNet users are elevated to a higher tier and given priority. And the FirstNet organization also has the mobile cell phone, I uh, forget what they call them, Gala may know the, the name they're using for them, but they, they can cows. roll those, pardon me? Cows, cell on wheels. Oh yeah, the cows and uh, roll those out and hopefully get the, you know, cell phone network back up and running for first, first net operators. I should probably uh, add here that not all phones are capable. So if you go in to talk with the first net people, uh, they're going to suggest that you get a phone if you don't have one that uh, is either a separate phone compatible with first net or if your phone is compatible, then they can get you a SIM card that will enable your phone on FirstNet. Um, the, the rate plans are very competitive as far as cost. And also if you have an AT&T personal account, you also get a 25% discount on your personal account also, if you have a separate phone. Um, so, those are just a couple other tidbits to add, but I understand that FirstNet does also, and I don't know if we have any active here right now in this area. Galen may also know this. They also have a special push to talk network, which <laughs> is set up for local first responders and emergency organizations. Uh, it's kind of a separate place to, uh, to uh, conduct communications, if you will. Galen, you have any more information on that? I have not heard anything about a push to talk network. Okay. There's one on my phone. I don't know anything about it. Yeah, it is uh, available um, on the FirstNet emails that are sent out. They do uh, quite a bit of talking about it, its availability in certain areas. I have to admit, I don't know how available it is in our area, but I understand that it's, it is a first net application that is available and should the need arise, it can be set up fairly quickly. So th that's just another option, another uh, method of communication that I thought I'd throw in. And I hope to get more involved in the Aries and everything now that I'm not working anymore. and. Uh, feel like I can actually do something besides work. I, uh, 
I will add one thing to that. Um, Jeff said something about <coughs> users, can, FirstNet users can be elevated uh, okay. or are elevated. The, the actual terminology can be elevated um, by an incident commander or a COML that's, uh, that's plugged in as a, uh, a uh, administrator on the network. Um, so it's not that everybody gets elevated. It, it, if we're at a, uh, an incident scene and, and play the incident commander's phone, we can do that uh, give him priority, but it's not everybody that gets elevated. One of the things that also is along with that is that used to be when it was all hard line, uh, the phone companies had what they called uh, ESS, uh, which was an essential service yeah. system. And that essential service yeah. system was there for first responders, uh, was there for hospitals, uh, different places that had to have phone service, you know, restored first, or that uh, had priority if uh, the phone line started getting jammed, so to speak. Those people always had the priority for their phones to go through. And this is truly the first time that I've seen the cell companies or anybody actually doing something because we've all gone cellular uh, to go back to some type of ESS system where uh, first responders or those people that are responsible for things had a way to, uh, to get priority communications through. The first thing that always happens in any disaster is if cell phones get jammed, everybody's trying to talk with their loved ones. And so the people that really need to get through can't. So this is something they finally came up with that allows that to happen. I wouldn't, I wouldn't crow on the cell folks, cell phone company folks. The feds paid a lot of money to make this happen. <laughs> is the the way that it actually works? They uh, true, true. They paid they paid the cell phone companies to do it, and and uh, that's it's Verizon. it's been a pretty good service. I, the big thing for is it's unlimited. It gets you all the the data you can eat um, for a very reasonable price, and and uh, uh, it's a good option if you're uh, if you're a volunteer with the the uh, Norman and probably more uh, responders, then uh, we can get you hooked up. Yeah, Verizon also has come out with, a, of course you knew this would happen, but <laughs> Verizon has come out with a similar system. And, uh, but AT&T is the one that pretty much pioneered it and got the whole thing well, running and they got it Verizon running. Verizon does not have access to the band 14 frequencies. Okay. That's the real key to it. Okay. And and they they give you money off. They're giving you the uh, similar money, but they're not giving you the resources for it because the government paid for. I mean, we as taxpayers paid AT and T to make this happen. Okay. So the first net, the first net you have to get through who? AT and T. AT and T. Yeah. The guys uh, up on the, at the AT&T store, and I don't have their names with me right here, but the, uh, well, FirstNet is, is pretty widely known about in all of the AT&T retail stores, um, or at least most of them. You can call and ask them if they know about it, and if they go, huh, pick another, pick another place. But the place you probably want to start is the AT&T um, office up at uh, on north 24th in norman north of robinson in that north university area and um, there's a couple of guys there who are actually pretty much specialists with it they've been in from the ground floor and uh, they came and did a presentation at one of our nor uh, norman uh, em meetings it's been good gosh two years ago i think but, um, you know, I'm, I'm sure it's something that if we wanted to get um, another meeting scheduled or something, that they probably wouldn't have anything against doing something like that, even virtually. There's a, uh, if you look at the background of my picture right now, that's the uh, first net cow that's assigned to Oklahoma. Uh, there's one assigned for the entire state of Oklahoma. 
And I don't know what whether they finally decided that it has to stay in Oklahoma or whether, like right now, with things impending down on the the uh, Louisiana Delta, that they they can move it down there. But I think it's supposed to stay here. Yeah, very good. Well, that's all I have. I, I'm by no means an expert on the subject, but I, I do belong to FirstNet, and I have been kind of following them for a couple of years now, and uh, they've really, really rolled out quite a, a usable uh, system here. So maybe we ought, ought to take advantage of it as much as possible. Uh, Mark, do you have anything else, sir? That's it for us, Lee. Fantastic. Okay, well, guys, uh, Mark and Matt, uh, just an outstanding presentation. Uh, Matt, uh, I, I applaud you greatly. Uh, believe me, you have uh, opened up our eyes a whole lot about Winlink because it's especially mine. I've, it's something I've been thinking about for a while, but had no idea even where to start with it. And so, uh, you know, if you're willing, there might be uh, another instance where you could uh, help folks uh, like on Elmer Nights or something like that. If we decide to uh, have enough interest and uh, several people wanting to do WinLink, I know that I'm very much interested in it. And, uh, and your presentation was very, very enlightening. So thank you very much, Matt. All right, uh, let's see where I'm at with this. Um, again, uh, you know, with a lot of other things, go to UW5 NOR website. Uh, that can tell you so many things about where you can find so much information. And I tell folks every time I can, you know, if you go on there, you're not going to be able probably in a day to go through every piece of information that's on that website. Uh, it's layers and layers and layers deep, and uh, there's so much good stuff there. So take advantage of it. Uh, when you're just roaming around, go to w5nor.org and take a look-see. Uh, Secretary Minutes, uh, I know Chris was out, but Galen last month, uh, filled in for him. So I think, Chris, did you get all that information? Not yet. He hasn't because I haven't given it to him. <laughs> all righty then. <laughs> he said it via WinLink. It's not there yet. <laughs> so I won't ask about last month's minutes. <laughs> we'll, we'll have them up shortly. All righty. Uh, Treasurer's report has been on there, and uh, we are extremely solvent. Uh, Hank, do you want to add anything? Uh, not really. The uh, statements are on the website, but uh, we uh, really have done a real good job of retaining our membership this year. We've got a lot of new members that have come in, and, uh, you know, it's just been uh, kind of a slow year financially, but like uh, like you said, we're, we're very strong. We have uh, about a little over $17,000 in the bank. We had less than that last year, and, and our, our expenses are very low. Uh, we were only about $650 or so lower in dues revenue through September of this year versus last year. So that's, that's great. Um, it will be very nice. I'm sure all of you will agree when we can start having face-to-face -face meetings again so we can keep our club intact. But right now we're doing a great job financially and membership wise. There's always some people that we need to talk to about renewing their memberships that were here last year that have decided not to renew this year. And Lee has got a list of those people along with the other members of the executive committee. There's not that many, but uh, uh, hopefully we can reach out to some of those people in the next two or three weeks and uh, see if we can convince them to rejoin the club. So that's all I had, Lee, but I'm open to any questions anybody has. Right. Any questions of our treasurer? Don't hear any. Uh, and yes, the list that he sent me uh, has 58 names on it. But one of the things that he didn't say is that last year we had a membership of 180 people. And even without those 58 people renewing, this year right now we have a membership of 180 people. 
<laughs> I think that's great showing that the number of new members that we've had come into the club. And, uh, you know, I think that more and more it's growing. I, uh, I just did a, a group that I'm working with now that uh, uh, I've got 16 people that want to get their license. So uh, more and more and more people are showing interest in ham radio. And I think it's up to the people that are doing it to help promote it. Uh, let's see. Uh, from there, uh, Peter Laws, VE testing report, siren net. Uh, yeah, I'm just updating the the new uh, new hams list on the website, but but Mark, don't put it up there yet because I'm not finished. Okay. Um, November finish, uh, finish, uh, update. Okay, now you can do it. Um, we had three candidates at the last. Why am I not hearing myself? Um, three candidates. Yeah, yeah, I saw that, Wayne. You made that face. I saw that. Uh, we had three candidates at the last test session held under pandemic conditions. Uh, Paul, who has been on some of our, uh, our Elmer Knight Zooms, uh, is a prof at OU in electrical engineering. He is now KI5LIL and got his general. And then James and Jameson, a father and son team, are KI5LIM and LIN, respectively. They got their technician licenses. So another good session uh, held under uh, ridiculous circumstances, but there you have it. Uh, next session is November 5th. Ridiculous is right. Yep. Uh, and Hank, I'm noting here on chat session, uh, looks like Dan, WO5WO, uh, tried to join, but uh, PayPal kept sending a site error. So you may want to take a look into that or contact WO5WO and try to help him. That would be great if I could just get him to send me an email uh, with his uh, name and call, and then uh, I could write it down here. But if you'll just send me an email, he's interested in joining. Yep. Uh, Tell him what your email is. Uh, my email is hankhamner at gmail.com. So if we can, uh, if he would go to PayPal, and it would be great if I could get a screenshot of where they're refusing to take him because uh, I haven't heard that before, but you know about PayPal, they get things screwed up every once in a while. Yeah, yeah. Peter, yes. um, you want to go to Siren Net? Yeah, Siren Net, we have one every Saturday at noon, weather, permit, weather and football permitting. Uh, we didn't have one in Norman. Was that last week or the week before? It was last week. Last, last week, last yeah, because we had a home football game, and once kickoff is, it, it never happens. Anyway, uh, doing it today, noon. Uh, it's kind of foggy, but we'll do the test anyway. Uh, if you're interested in becoming a spotter, let me know. Send me an email, n5uwy at arrl.net. I have a question for you, Peter. Certainly, Mr. Lespiza. Go ahead. Yesterday was Friday, and I heard two sirens from someplace. Uh, do you happen to know where those are? I live near Lloyd Noble Stadium. I don't know. Uh, all the, if you remember I know they were out working on stuff yesterday. It was it a that, burp, like a short piece? We no, it was like every, that right at noon, every, and it lasted Friday. a minute or so. Interesting. Ooh. Every Friday. It could be testing. If it was right at noon, that sounds like a scheduled thing. Um, I thought the it was members of, of me, the central Oklahoma. Sure. Sorry, go ahead. I thought it was southwest of me, but I can't be sure. Uh, it's entirely possible. Um, Could have been Noble. Are they working on that finally? Oh, that'd be nice if they got some money finally. No, it's uh, not. I think it is. Uh, Goldsby, possibly Goldsby, are in that area. Uh, we used to Norman used to test. I think it was Friday at noon, and yep. as I mentioned in my presentation last week, about ten years ago, all the cities that make up the Central Oklahoma Emergency Management Agency got together and said, "You know, let's all test on the same day." Now, not everybody's a mem not every city or town is a member of that organization, and they're free certainly free to test whenever they'd like to test. Uh, so it, it could be you're just hearing a siren from some other town uh, that isn't part of that group and they just test on a different day but i don't as to who it is i don't know who it is yeah we i'm in the same area and we hear it here every friday at noon as well so okay oh we might check newcastle and see if that's them that's or goalsby yeah yeah it's got to be somewhere down in that area because 
it's it's loud enough that it doesn't depend on the wind blowing it up here. Uh, I was, I was going to suggest that too. So uh, the wind really makes a big difference. It always amazes me. Yeah, yeah. Um, when, especially this time of year when it flips around and we start getting wind out of the north, all of a sudden the sirens to your south that were really loud aren't really loud anymore. <laughs> you know, the ones to your north are. It's it's quite surprising how much a difference the wind makes. But I, I don't know who it is. Um, drive around, see if you can find it. Yeah, yeah. Um, Peter. I'm teasing, of course. Anything else? Um, somebody, somebody's saying something. I have a daughter who lives in. Washington. Is that yeah. Terry? That's you. They Get closer to your microphone. In Washington, we lost you, Terry. You're I was saying I have an daughter lives in Washington, and they test Washington and Goldsby at noon. Washington and Goldsby at noon on Friday. I think that's what you're trying to say. Your daughter lives down there. Hey, we'll have to ch we'll have to check that because it'd be nice to find out where it's coming yeah, from. Yeah, it'd, it'd be just good to know. Just in information. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, for Terry. The um, anything else, Peter? No, that's it. I urge everyone, if you have not adopted a siren, think about it. There's plenty of homeless sirens out there. <laughs> of a good caretaker. And, you know, you, you would, it would make you feel good in your heart to do that. <laughs> I adopted one from Haiti. See? Oh, no, no. Okay, well, thank you. It's good to do it at home first. Uh, with that, Phil Senate, uh, anything on the technical committee? Nothing on the technical committee. Everything is working. Uh, all repeaters are up and no complaints. All right. And while you're there and talking, why don't you go ahead and do the two meter uh, Aries? Okay, I'll do. Uh, is my audio coming through okay? Yeah, yeah, you're fine. Okay, well, a little interference here from uh, K5CAP uh, Sonic. <laughs> um, Aries Net. Tuesday evenings at 8 p.m. local time on the SCARS repeater. Um, it's going good. We average about 30 to 35 check-ins. Um, that's a good forum to get uh, uh, quick club information, um, notices, things about meetings, and such as that. Um, what more can I say about Aries? The, uh, the Aries net controllers are doing a great job. We got, uh, we got about five different controllers that, uh, take turns doing the Tuesday evening Aries net. Uh, while I'm on the phone here, we also do a net each morning from Monday through Saturday. For the early risers, uh, we call it MacNet. Um, that happens each morning at 9 a.m. local time. Again, on the SCARS repeater frequency, uh, we average about 20 check-ins on that net. And uh, we're, uh, we, we've had really good response with folks checking in, and with, that's another forum to uh, disseminate quick information, such as uh, information about the club meeting today and such. Lee came on the net and told us all about it and how to uh, get on the uh, club meeting today. Uh, so either the uh, morning magnet or the Aries evening Tuesday night net. Uh, come and join us. That's it.
Thank you, Phil. Appreciate that, sir. And uh, let's see, uh, Jim, are you here to do six meter net? Do we have anybody can do the six meter net? I'll get a plug in for Jim that every Monday night at 8 p.m. on 50.200, he has holds the uh, six meter net. So join in if you can. Well, thank you, sir. And while you're at it, Bill, you want to go ahead and do the 10 meter net. While I'm at it, I'll go ahead and do the 10 meter net. Uh, Wednesday night, we have at 8 p.m. Central Time, we have our 10 meter net on 28.45 upper sideband. So come and join in on that. And lead while the meeting has been going on, I received text messages from two people that would like courtesy check-ins. Uh, Michigan Mike <laughs> uh, from Grayling, Michigan. Uh, his dog has chewed his internet cable in two. And he, he's not able to Zoom yet. And then uh, Norman Mike, N5SOF, is uh, driving through the remnants of the hurricane somewhere around Gatlinburg, Tennessee. But, uh, they, they would like courtesy check-ins. Thank you. Well, we'll do a courtesy for SOF. Michigan Mike, we cut him no slack whatsoever. <laughs> he doesn't have a dog, does he? Uh, no, he just uses the dog for <laughs> Thank you very much for that information. Uh, I will go ahead and partially do one, and I'll explain why. Uh, every Monday night at 8.15 p.m., <laughs> we have the uh, statewide Aries DMR net on uh, statewide talk group 3140. But uh, there seems to be a problem as of late, and... Uh, because of that, I will let uh, Mark Klein <laughs> take it from there. <laughs> you mean the radio radiology problem or your DM? <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, Lee and I uh, alternate that and got a panic call at 8.15 this week. My radio won't work. So I got to jump in and, and uh, run that net. But no, it's been a great net. We've got about... I don't know, 35 or so that jump in on that from the statewide group. And if you're in DMR, that's a great place to go practice. If you're not in DMR, it's a great place to uh, um, get some help uh, once you get going. Tuesday night, uh, I'll veer off and say Tuesday night Elmer nights is a great way to get yourself uh, caught up to get on Elmer on the DMR nets. Uh, we're here on Zoom every Tuesday night from 630 to 9. And gosh, that's about another 25 or 30 that show up on that group. And uh, we end up fixing stuff uh, from all over, people from all over the country. We had some uh, successes from satellite work from Bixby, Oklahoma this last week. So uh, videos are on the YouTube channel if you want to catch on the, catch up on the past ones. But uh, yeah, I would on say that. on the DMR net, it's amazing mm -hmm. the check-ins that we get actually from all over the country. Yeah. Uh, we're, we're, they tell us that we're one of the most active around about that and that we always try to do a little training session and every check-in as well as just checking people in. So uh, they really appreciate that happening. And Mark, thank you for that. Uh, let's see. Uh, been forever since I've heard from Michelle about the YL network. Can anybody... Well this weekend they're up at the uh, batfish so if you're listening on the air or or on facebook bat fishing again they're bat fishing again and they're they're doing some uh work from the batfish they can't go into the batfish but they are um camping around the site of the batfish so the wilds are all up there doing their thing and i've got some information on that oh go boy go michelle carey few minutes ago. We are getting started on our YL weekend at the USS Batfish. We have three radios set up. One will be operating in the club room in the museum with the call sign WW2OK. One station in the tent by the submarine with call sign WW2SUB. That's clever. And one station in the parking lot with the call sign ww 2 SUB, same call sign. 
Uh, we'll light up the airwaves after a meeting around 11 o'clock, and hopefully we can uh, get you on the air. And then there's a series of pictures here that was posted on Facebook. Yeah. Okay. In Thank our uh, our uh, web page for the okay. club. Fantastic. Well, thank you for that information. Okay. Uh, any other nets or anything that anybody wants to report on? Yeah. That? One, one reminder. Uh, I think we talked about it the other night on Elmer night. Uh, WA zero RCR up in the St. Louis suburbs uh, runs a radio program on 1860 kilohertz AM that is in the 160 meter band. Uh, he uses a converted broadcast transmitter uh, and he transmits from about 10 a.m. Saturday, I can't hear him yet, uh, till 3 a.m. tomorrow morning. Uh, and he runs all the news line and rain report and ARRL news and all the various different audio programs for amateurs uh, on that frequency. Uh, can't hear, I'm, I'm not hearing them right now, but I don't have very good antenna for 1860. You may have to wait till closer to sundown. Uh, but it's, it's pretty entertaining. It's, it's got all the different ham bulletins there and he just, he runs it like a broadcast station, except he IDs every 10 minutes and presumably he calls someone at the beginning. So it's not technically a broadcast, but, um, it's pretty interesting. 1860 kilohertz AM. What's this call again? Whiskey Alpha Zero. Romeo, Charlie, Romeo. Thank you. He's running 1860 AM. 1860 AM, the 160 meter band. All right. Well, That's all good, I got. Good to see some of that old equipment got repurposed. <laughs> okay, now a uh, little bit of business, gentlemen. Uh, it's that time of year. We're uh, winding up the year. And we're coming to the time that we need to think about elections. So uh, at this time, I need to go ahead and open up uh, for anybody that would like to entertain uh, being the office of vice president. Or pro Say again. Or president, if you want. <laughs> well, yeah, you know, I did. I'll, I'll volunteer, you know, someone, but you know, <laughs> I don't know. Mark, have you considered it? You mean me? No, Mark Klein. Yeah, yeah, yeah you mean me? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I've done it in the past, and uh, there's options. So, you know, obviously, it's something we need to do at the December one, so we can keep these open for a while. Right. Yep. Right. Yep. That, that's the reason I'm bringing it up now. Good, guys. good, good. good. Uh, you know, by, by our bylaws and everything like that, we need to go ahead and approach it right now. Uh, now, next, next month, we'll have to uh, formulate that up and go ahead and have an election. But for right now, we're at that point. And if you think about it, you know, and you decide that, Yes, I've got some time. I can help serve the club in the vice presidential role. You can help with, you know, getting the programs presented every month, that sort of thing. Then by all means, please think about it. Uh, you know, uh, it's, it, it's something that, you know, you give back is essentially what it is. So uh, with that, any other uh, comments or anything about that? And a hush fell over the crowd. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody open your mouth. <laughs> yeah. Now, you if know, you bring up the national election, let's see how many mouths open in. We, we have a terrific ham club, and we have a terrific membership and great numbers. You know, gosh, we're what? The Hamvention Club of the Year. But that doesn't happen just by having meetings. That's there right. Has to there has to be leadership in all aspects, um, whether it is in the administration of the club, whether it is in the finances, whether it's in the technical side, whether it's in the programs, uh, whether it's in the social media, 
um, website, you know, there, there's a million things that makes this club what it is. And it takes people to do it. We have people that have expertise in every one of those areas that we just talked about. Step up. It's time to step up. If you have expertise, step up. And even if you don't have expertise, step up. We need people in all of those positions. And I don't know if Lee said it or not, um, because I'm also trying to watch the football game that's getting ready to happen. Hint, Lee. Um, but the, uh, the vice president is also the president-elect for the following year. So I was you, trying to hide that from you. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> no, I echo exactly. Thank you, Galen, because you, you said it, it beautifully. Guys, you know, the, what you enjoy about the club, you know, the website, all these other things happens because people step up and give their time. And, you know, if you're enjoying what you have, then, you know, maybe think about adding to it. You know, it's, it's not something that has to rule your life because it certainly doesn't mind. I've got a, you know, a rich, healthy life around besides the club, but I enjoy what I do for the club. So give it some thought, you know, maybe you can step up and, you know, and do some more for us. Uh, okay. The other thing is uh, I want to remind everybody uh, for all you people that are shopping on Amazon all the time, don't forget about Amazon smile. Uh, I just bought another radio yesterday because I received a check in the mail from when I had an Amazon radio purchase. I also did an extended warranty. And because of that extended warranty, my radio, my base station radio uh, died on me a couple of weeks ago. And uh, the warranty company just sent me a check for the full amount that I paid originally. So I ordered another radio and should have it delivered Sunday. So guys, you know, think about it. It's, you know, if you use Amazon, then there's a section there you can go in and, and add Smile. Smile is a, for charitable organization Which to we get are one. money back. And because of that, you know, oh the club receives money. Peter, uh, you know, takes care of that. Peter, you want to fill in more on that? We used to do, we started out doing Amazon Associates where we had links to various test uh, uh, study material and the, the Associates program is not what it used to be. We don't get as much money that way anymore. But Smile is very simple. I will be putting up a, uh, a link on the Facebook page that will take you to the right stuff and will set you up to designate SCARS as your charity. Um, if, if you, th this costs you nothing, uh, this is skimmed right out of, uh, Jeff Bezos pocket, which is a very big pocket and a lot of more money needs to be skimmed out of his pocket. Uh, but we have made, uh, in total between, uh, associates and prime lately, we've, we've got a thousand bucks in the kitty that's solely from members buying stuff and designating us as their charity. Now that's not a thousand bucks every year. That's over seven or eight years at least. Uh, but you know what? It's free money. And if nothing else, it'll pay for the coffee if we ever get meetings back together again. Uh, I, as I said, Prime Day, if you're an Amazon Prime member, Prime Days are coming up here next week uh, and where we get even bonuses on the Amazon Prime stuff. But I will post a link in the Facebook group uh, that has the right stuff. When you click on it, it'll, it'll get you set up. And then you just go to smile.amazon.com. The site's the same. It's all the same stuff. The price for you is the same. We just get a kickback. It's a very yeah. small kickback, but we do get a kickback. The first Half of 1%. The first time you have to pick South Canadian Amateur Radio Society. Yeah, and the, the link I provide will will make that, will pre-make that choice. And of course, you're free to change that to some other charity because there are lots of charities that take advantage of that. And so for those of you who are not on fake book. <laughs> yes. I'll put it on the bottom of the website. It'll be on the front page of the website. There you there go. You go. There you go. Perfect. 
Okay, so please, you know, use that. The club gets free money and it doesn't cost you a penny. Uh, I'll remind everybody that there is also a proposed fee change by the Federal Communications Commission. And uh, there's going to be a time coming up, I think, shortly, if I remember correctly, where you can have input to the FCC about your feelings on it. Mark, can you furnish a little bit more on that? I can. The, uh, that is a, it's not the FCC, it's our friends at Congress that uh, have decided that they want us to pay more money. Um, the FCC has just um, documented the way it should be. If you go to w5nor.org slash FCC, you will go to the page that I have on my screen now, and it explains everything where it came from. If you wish to complain about it or uh, uh, put some stuff down there at the bottom, there is uh, uh, the, the, the comment period is open on the electronic comment filing system, ECFS. If you click on that, um, you're looking for docu document docket 20-270. Um, there is no, they have not set the end date yet, but you can start complaining at this point. The idea is they're going to take $50 from you every time you get a license or you renew a license. Um, I think, Peter, Peter, it did not change to change address. Administratives are still free, as, as I recall. Oh, what? Oh, what? If you change your address, honestly, it doesn't cost you. Honestly, I, I have not kept up with it the okay. way I should. I have, um, uh, if you renew, I if you renew your correct, license, though. if you renew your license, it costs you 50 bucks for a 10 year license. Um, which so, is, it, there's some other problems with it. For example, if you if you get your first license and then next week you upgrade to general, it's another 50 bucks. And that's a problem that's unique to our service amongst all the FCC services. Uh, and that's something that probably needs to be addressed. Uh, 50 bucks for a 10 year license, on the other hand, geez, I don't know. I, I, I don't want to pay it, don't get me wrong, but in the grand scheme of things, I don't know, five bucks a year. It's a barrier for kids. Upgrades are a problem. Make your comments to the FCC. Don't gripe at the FCC. This was not their idea. This was in one of the bills Congress passed last year. Ray Bombs Act. Yeah, Ray Bombs, and that R A Y B it actually stands for something because it's yes. Congress. But it was it was Congress's idea. This was not the FCC's idea. Regardless, they're the ones that have to do it, so they've got to work out the details. It stands for that want to take more of your money every time they can. Well, yeah, and it's you know it's it, it, the the estimates that I've seen, um, given the math and the numbers of the history, I think it would go down. You know, we would lose people because of that but um they're saying that's like 5.2 million dollars a year is what the the yeah, that's chicken feed to them that's chicken feed to them and and why are why are they nailing us i think the right reason that the they're doing this is to um equalize it uh, gmrs has had a 70 dollar fee for quite some time you know i i grew up in the day when fcc licenses cost four dollars or i'm sorry cb licenses cost four dollars me too. So, uh, yep. yep. So when I got a check back one time because they canceled that fee because they had too much money piling up um, because the law was if you collect more money than it costs you to administer it, you have to send the money back. So it's just a pendulum swinging back and forth. There is a place you can complain. I, you know, I'm kind of like Peter. The, the, the fee isn't a big deal. Uh, you know, it's not going to go and help us anyway. Don't get don't get me wrong. It's not going to be a good thing for us. Um, but I, I think this would give a good opportunity for clubs like ours to uh, subsidize the, the kids. You know, the, I think the kids are the ones that, that I would be concerned about. That, you know, maybe we, we and other clubs would uh, offer subsidies to kids like we do on radios now currently. So um, that's something we could look at if that goes into effect. That's uh, I'm going to say it's going to go through because it's Congress. That's why I bring this up, though, every time. You know, it's... Yeah. It, they are starting to listen more and more when there is public input, you know, and realize that, realize that you do have a voice and it is, you know, effective. And that the, the whole thing with this is, I think for most of us, the $50 fee is not the thing. 
But I look at, you know, kids coming into this hobby, which is, you know, going to be our lifeblood. And for them, that's, that's expensive. They can't afford that. They can't go to mom and dad and say, can I have $50 just so I can get my license? So, you know, I don't think that's a, a good way to administer it whatsoever. And also to, to change over if, you know, a month later you want to go upgrade to general to get hit for another $50. So think about it yourself, what your thoughts are, how it, how it feels to you, and go on their website, find it, and make your comments. Make yourself known. Uh, thank you for that, guys. All right. Uh, other you. than that. Uh, start thinking about if you haven't paid your dues for 2020, there's still time and, you know, getting ready to come up in a couple of more months after this one is 2021. So uh, get out the piggy bank and remember our dues have not increased. <laughs> they stayed the same forever. <laughs> You know, it's something you can budget for, unlike gasoline or anything else. Uh, Lee, I've got, Lee, I've got one uh, Morse code thing. Yeah, you. go ahead. Um, for those of you that are interested in Morse code, this looks like a cool thing. Alan Cope of the uh, Aeronautical Center and Amateur Radio Club, ACARC, is going to be doing a uh, Morse code study group on uh, Monday nights from 7 p.m. to 8 p.m., starting October 26th. He's running this on Microsoft Teams, um, and he'll do these classes, these uh, support classes for about 10 weeks um, until the end of the year, you know, Christmas and all that nonsense. And then in the first part of the year, he plans to get on the air practice. These are not classes because Morse code is something you have to learn yourself, but they are study sessions and, um, and um, they are, um, he will go through the first class, for instance, to explain what Morse code is. And we will have resources um, on a wiki or a, a documentation on that Teams setup so that you can figure out which way you want to learn. So uh, kind of a hand-holding support group idea. And I think that's a good way to do it. You know, you're going to have to spend your own time because... I like a high tone and you like a low tone and somebody else wants faster and somebody else wants slower. Um, he's just kind of going to wrangle everybody um, and, and shame them into showing up Monday and, and talking about what they're doing. So um, to get involved, get your pen, pencil or paper is AC, AE five C alpha echo five, Charlie at S N O Sam November Oscar Fox uniform S N O F U dot org. To say again, Alpha Echo 5 Charlie at snofu.org. Sam, Nancy, Oscar, foxuniform.org. Um, I've got hooked up already on the Teams account. If you have problems getting a whole, getting onto the Teams thing, I'll be happy to help you. Um, but I think Alan's got a really good idea here. And, and uh, if you want to get involved, go uh, go jump up there Monday nights on, uh, on 7 8 Yeah, I want to go uh, please check your microphones if you got background noise. Uh, we're almost finished. So, uh, any other announcements from anyone? Hey, Lee, put your glasses back on for a second. <laughs> yeah, put them down on your nose like you were. <laughs> now, does that look like the uh, background <laughs> picture I have up right now? I don't know. I don't see it. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, you know what what role that was. I was just going to say, do you know what the reference is there? I do. Okay. I will lead you out of the country. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, I appreciate it as always. Uh, if there is nothing else, uh, any new business anybody would like to bring up at this time? I have a quick question. All right. Uh, for Hank, Hank, if you're still there, did you get my uh, message about my change in my phone number? I sure did. I'll take care of it this afternoon. All right. Thank you. Uh, I'll keep the checks coming. All right. Good. <laughs> Lee, Lee, send me one, too, if you want to. <laughs> got your name Ladies on it. Gentlemen, I thank you. I appreciate you being here. 
I think the most that we had today was 36 people. No, uh, we, we were over 40 there for a while, and uh, we got about half a dozen on the Zoom, Zoom side, so we got close to 45, 50. Yeah, that's, it's still not close to having 70 people in person like we did. We okay. got to work on that. It's better. I, I don't want to see this club, you know, go through, you know, a, a period of atrophy just because of COVID. So let's let's keep it alive, please. Unless anybody has anything else, I will say thank you very much. We appreciate you being here. We appreciate what you do for us, what you do for the community. And uh, with that, I adjourn us. We all had a question. Go ahead. For anyone who wants to join, lunch is at the Boomerang Cafe on uh, um, uh, uh, Porter Street in Norman, right after the Siren Deck. Oh, oh, and also I forgot something and I am terribly sorry. Next Saturday, next Saturday at the Denny Ranch, Rancherama and Slaughterville, Oklahoma will be the Scars Picnic. Bring your appetite. The picnicking is going to start about four o'clock, and uh, that's everything is planned, paid for, and all we need is hungry people to show up. We, yes, we're providing burgers, dogs, baked beans. Bring a side dish if you want it. Um, you can bring a girlfriend dish if you want it. Um, you might want to bring something to set on. If you want adult beverages, bring those with you. Um, that's it. I think that makes it pretty easy. Well, and, and after that, come join us in the um, parking lot of St. Paul's Episcopal Church and uh, do scouting uh, with... Uh, Jamboree on the air uh, to try to get our youth involved. Fantastic. Definitely always want to try to get more youth involved in this, especially. Uh, as I said at the beginning, I've got a group that we're setting up a ham class for that uh, got about 16 people that want to get their technician license. If you know of anybody that's interested, send me an email or smoke signal, whatever you need to do. And let me know so that we can make sure we get people included. Other than that, does anybody have anything else? And I'll adjourn us again. Next month we have uh, Gerald Taylor doing electromagnetic pulse is gonna be the presentation. So we've got that one up to up uh, all scheduled. So let's uh, think about that as you go through your next 30 days of how your EMP presentation or EMP uh, will affect your radio and Terry is holding up his uh, his and peanuts new qsl card it looks like there looks neat so have to get one of those <laughs> all right guys uh, siren net at noon talk to you then see y'all i'm out of here thanks guys have a great day glad to be here Later. Good evening. Good evening to everybody. Boomer. <laughs> Center. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you can stay in chat if you want. I don't, I'll just leave it open. Not a problem. 73 all. Get off my page. What's that? That thing? O five W O. Yeah. Well, maybe not. I'll see you. We'll see you next time, man's man's and women's be good. Daddy. <laughs>